G'day everyone, what a ripper afternoon it is to do a little bit of fly fishing for trout. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now the current date is the 3rd of December, three days into the new Murray cod season, and here I am trout fishing. Why is that? Because I love it. I love cod fishing, don't get me wrong, but I love trout fishing too. Now this morning I put my kayak in, in the middle of Wangaratta to go cod fishing. The river was still pumping really hard. I fished for an hour and a half and battled the current for an hour and a half. I never had a touch, so I went home. I thought I might go trout fishing this afternoon. So I went back to bed and had a couple of hours sleep, got up, had some lunch, now I'm going fly fishing. Let's go and see if we can fool a trout to take my artificial fly. I've never actually, I fished this creek a lot on my channel, but I've never entered it here because the blackberries are too high, but it looks like someone's come through and cleared a lot of them. Anyway, in my left pocket, I've got my gink to help keep my fly floating, my asthma puffer and my secateurs for those hard to get through parts. And in my right pocket, I've got my Canon G9X, which is a little camera that I take fishing with me. It's a great compact little camera. In my shoulder bag, I've got my GoPro batteries, my flies, and a little hand saw if I need it. The first thing I'm doing here is looking to see whether there's any fresh footprints. Not from deer, I can see lots of deer footprints, but can I see any fisherman footprints? Just so that I know whether I'm fishing secondhand water or not. Here's a glorious little pool. Bit of a challenge to get into it, but it's a glorious little pool. Got him! Swimmers at the water. Yeah, folks, my first trout. He took the nymph. I'm going to get a quick photo with my little Canon camera. I got him right at the back of the pool. The fly just hit the water, and before I had a chance to say, it's harder. It's a hard spot to get into. Bang! Fish on. Hey, folks, love the little rainbow trout. See you later, mate. This is going to be interesting. I've put my camera in a dry bag, my gink and my asthma puffer in my bag. Now I'm going to get wet and bitten by a big fat airy spider. Whew. Right now, half an hour, about 80 metres and 279 swear words later, I've made it to the spot that I normally get in. I know it's a little bit overgrown, but it does open up up here a bit further. And that's the bit that I'm really looking forward to getting into. Oh, got him! I saw the floor. Look at him go! I've done a little bow and arrow. He's a little brownie. I've done a little bow and arrow cast up under there. I've uh, been practicing that. It's a, quite a bit harder to do than it looks. A little bow and arrow cast up into that thick scrub, and this lovely little brown came out and grabbed my nymph. I'll uh, just let him swim for a second. Now I'll get him off and unhook him. I won't worry about a photo because I've got my camera put away in a dry bag in my pocket. In my back, in my bag, because I had to get through a really hard part. Lovely little brownie. See you later, mate. People often say to me, do a bow and arrow cast. They're actually a lot harder to do than you think. They're one of those things that's easier said than done. I've been practicing, and I think that might be the first fish that I've ever caught using a bow and arrow cast. Just like this. Just like that. It's flicked it up in there, then I watch the stimulator just disappear. Obstacle after obstacle. Ugh. I love this stream, it's one of my favourites, but it, uh, as you can see, it's not one of the easiest to fish. It's tricky, 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 tricky. I've almost made my way up here to the good part of the creek. Look at that for a run, eh? Got to be a fish there, doesn't there? Hey, look at that. Yee, fishy, fishy. Yee, fishy, fishy, fishy. Got to get one in here, don't I? Surely. As always, I just start off at the back and slowly progress forward with my casts. There surely has to be a trout in there that wants my dry or my nymph. 
This one took the draw, I missed him. Never felt it, he's got him. He took the draw, he came out after it twice. Come on, mate. He took the stimulator. Oh, I didn't get my camera out of my bag. I put him back in the water for a minute. He did, oh, look at that. He, I kid you not, he was on the stimulator. Then he fell off the stimulator and landed on the nymph. I'm not even joking. He got off and ended up with a nymph in his mouth. I saw Rowan Jenner from RKJ Fishing do that last year. And now he's got off before I even got a photo. He got... <laughs> I don't know why the camera was telling me to raise the flash. Anyway, you saw the action. You saw it right here on Robbie Fishing. He came up under it. He grabbed it. I struck. I got him on the stimulator. He got off the stimulator, the dry fly. And then as he was departing, he somehow ended up with the nymph in his mouth. He must have thought, oh, I'll just grab that while I'm swimming past. <laughs> and then he got off before I got a photo anyway. I love this. Absolutely love it. Now I know that my wife's just over there somewhere because she's carrying my phone. She's doing a bit of bird photography while I'm having a wonderful time attempting to catch fish on the fly. And I just got a notification on my watch that says connected. So she's pretty close. She's within Bluetooth range. Now after an epic tangle, I'm back in business. But my, uh, my dropper under my stimulator is a lot shorter. That looks good. Oh, got him! I thought I missed him then. Wow, I've just had a huge tangle on this tree just here. And it took me ages to untangle it. And ended up having to break a bit of line off between my dropper and my, uh, between my stimulator and my nymph. So my nymph's literally only about 15 centimetres underneath my stimulator. But the fish still came up and took it. Come on, mate. Come on. There we go. Another lovely rainbow on the gold bead-headed nymph. Let's see if I can get a photo of this one. I failed miserably last time. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Ah. Rainbow trout. See you later, mate. Right. Another one on the nymph. My, my dropper, the one nymph is literally only 15 centimetres under my stimulator, and I thought, should I tie a new dropper on? And I thought, no, I'll leave it like that and just see how it goes. How the hell am I going to get through all that? This is absolutely ridiculous. Please don't be that bad again, ever. <laughs> I can see a fish rising up there. That's a great sign. I've just got to catch my breath. I couldn't get through there, so I went through there, and I've got to tell you, that was the hardest I reckon I've ever had to work on any trout stream. Just getting through there was an absolute nightmare. All right, this is where I just saw a fish rise only a couple of minutes ago. Just up there, about a metre in front of that. Yeah, around there it was. Oh, got him! He took the nymph. I saw the stimulator, it just disappeared. Oh, off he goes. He got off. I wasn't going to worry about a photo of him anyway. I put my camera away. Is it a, uh, I would have killed it climbing through all that crap before. Another nice little rainbow. Taking on the nymph. For oh, another one. Oh, look at this tiny one. Another nice little rainbow. The one before it was about twice this size and it was still small. Hey, 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 hey. Rainbow trout are so hard to unhook because they just wiggle so much. All right. Rainbow trout. See you later, mate. Oh, 
Oh, there's a fish on him. You've got to be joking. That is a fluke. A little brownie. <laughs> that was an absolute fluke. It wasn't until I tried to lift my line out, and I'll, I'll unhook the brown, and I'll tell you what happened. I'll get him back in first. Nice little brown trout of around 26, 27 centimetres. See you later, mate. What happened? My fly started going over that log and into those rapids. And when I went to pick it up, there was a fish on the end. I reckon that brown must have been sitting under that log and grabbed the nymph just as the current was taking the stimulator down. Sometimes you get them through skill and sometimes you just get them through pure ass. <laughs> that was that one. Pure ass. Oh, there's a take. Got him. Oh, it's a nice one, this one. This is the biggest one today. Look, we got a brownie. Lovely brown trout. Look at that. That's a beautiful brown on the nymph. Come on, mate. What a fatty. I'm not going to worry about a photo because I'll just, what I'll do, I'll just hold the GoPro nice and close so you can get a bit of a view. Beautiful brown. I'll drop him back in the water. I'll put the GoPro on my head. That's the equivalent of a photo. I just think on a warm day, I was having trouble with the first couple of fish trying to get photos. And they were out longer than I'd like them to be. So I'd rather just get him out, unhook him, and put him back in. This is a very, very fat trout. Very, very fat and healthy brown. See you later, mate. Off he goes. That was the biggest one today. So far. Because I'm going to get a bigger one shortly. Oh, God, that was a take in the same spot. Didn't feel any weight. He's under it. Got him. I saw him come up and grab it. A little rainbow this time. Come on, buddy. Come on, mate. Yeah, wiggle wart. Wiggle wart. Browns are so much easier to hold. Lovely little bow. I'm having a blast. I'm catching some fish today. Rainbow trout. See you later, mate. Now, if I'm going to get a big fish today, it's going to be in this pool. That's not to say I am going to get a big fish, but if I am, this is where I'm expecting it more than anywhere else. This is a gorgeous deep pool. A few snags, lots of water flowing through. And I've seen big fish in here in the past, which always heightens my anticipation. One of the things that I really love about this is the anticipation, and you're just knowing that at any second now, that stimulator can just disappear. Or a fish can come up from underneath it and grab it. Any, any second. There's one under, there's one big one. Got him. Yes, look, I saw him come and grab the nymph. Look at the size of this fish. I saw him come up and grab it. I was, I was looking at the dry and I saw this dark shadow come up underneath and I was like, look at this big one. I'm going to get my camera out, even though I'm having a pretty crap day with the camera. I'm going to try and get a photo of this one. He is a beautiful, he or she or whatever it is, is a beautiful brown trout. If it gets off, it gets off. It doesn't really matter. I consider that caught. If I really wanted to land it, I wouldn't be worrying about getting a camera and getting a photo. Right, got my camera ready, turn it on, put it in auto because that's always the easiest when you're on the fly, on the fly, haha, <laughs> get it, pun, no pun intended, look at that, what an absolute ripper. Alright, a brown trout, see you later mate, he's a bit slow, off he goes. I'm still seeing him just swimming along the bottom there nice and slowly. I'm having a blast. 
Now a couple of things I just want to go over in case you've missed my last couple of fly fishing videos. I'm using a seven foot six four weight rod with five weight line. It's a Wild Fish Wind Warrior series with a Shimano Altegra reel. I'm using a Royal Stimulator fly with a black gold bead headed nymph or black bead headed nymph with a gold bead head. That's, that's my go-to combination for this type of fishing. I do have other, other flies but I always start with this and if this works it stays on if this doesn't work I can change to something else but Royal Stimulator gold bead headed nymph nine times out of ten that works well so that's what I always start with and usually end up sticking with. The other thing I want to just briefly touch on in case you're wondering why there's no underwater release like there usually is I've been having lots of trouble with my GoPro Hero 9. On three occasions recently I've lost all the files. I've got some awesome black snake footage, footage the other day that I lost. And some fly fishing footage. And even back in one of my earlier Waranga Basin videos a couple of months ago I lost a heap of files. In the end I changed uh, memory cards. That didn't do any, make any difference. So I bought a whole new GoPro. I've got a brand new GoPro Hero 9 on my head. And I'm a bit reluctant to put it underwater in case that's what's causing the issues with the other one. Might not be that, I don't know, but for whatever reason, it's certainly having a few issues, so I'm a little bit apprehensive about putting the camera underwater. And let's go and see if we can catch another fish. Got me! Oh! That snapped my nymph. I reckon that was a decent fish. He just hit it and I felt a real heavy weight and then nymph gone. I wonder if he'll rise for the dry. Probably not. I've got a nymph in his mouth. I reckon that was a decent fish because the moment I struck, I snapped the nymph off in the fish's mouth, which is something that I have done before and it's never something to be proud of. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that fish was, but it felt pretty substantial. I never saw it. The fly just went under, I struck, it actually pulled forward as I pulled backwards and it snapped the nymph off. Now I've just caught quite a few fish on that nymph and everything seemed fine. So I reckon it might have been a half decent fish. Either that or the teeth from that last, last brown trout might have frayed the line, I don't know. But anyway, I'm literally getting out about 50 or 60 metres up here. So I'm not going to stuff around tying on a new nymph. I'm just going to fish the dry for the last 50 metres. I've only had one or two takes on the dry today. But without the nymph there, they might be a bit more inclined to come and hit it, hopefully. Here's one! Oh, I missed him! Without the nymph, he would come up for the dry. I wonder if the nymph was there, if it hit the nymph instead. Here's another little one! Missed him too! I've had two takes in about one minute in this one little run. So exciting when you can see them come up from underneath to grab it. Sometimes they just appear from nowhere and sometimes they seem to just come up in slow motion and sort of suspend under the fly. And that's when it's really cool. Oh, take, got him. <laughs> one handed strike, look at that, I saw the take and I struck There you are folks, even without the uh, without the nymph Took the nymph off and straight away they're going nuts over the dry Look at that, and that dry just popped straight out ah, God, they had to hold the little rainbows Mate, thanks for coming along, see you later Isn't that amazing, the moment I took the stimulator, the uh, nymph off or The moment a fish took the nymph off I decided to stick with the stimulator on its own for the last little bit and the fish started hitting the dry all of a sudden. Come on stimulator munches. Oh, got him! Another one, oh he got off. Another one on the dry I was going to say. Very similar to the last little rainbow that I just uh, I just caught in that last pool. Words can't describe just how much I'm enjoying this at the moment. I love it. I know cod season's open. Don't get me wrong, I love my cod fishing. 
but this season this spring has just been one of the best trout seasons that we've had and i'm just absolutely loving my time up here i've always loved being up in the hills chasing trout it's always been one of my favorite things to do ever since i was a kid beautiful pool absolutely beautiful this hole's a lot bigger and deeper now than it was last time i fished here a few years ago Over there where that water's flowing. There he is! Got him! <laughs> Another little bow. Ooh, he just got off. There you go. See you later, mate. Self-releasing in my hand. A lovely little rainbow. They're loving this stimulator today. <laughs> begin to tell you how much fun I've had. I've fluked a couple, I've caught a couple with skill, I've caught some on the dry and I've caught some on the nymph and I've spooked a few. I've just had an absolute blast up here doing something that I love and that is wet wading up a clear mountain stream on a hot day. Folks I hope you've enjoyed the video, thanks very much for watching it. If you have liked it, want to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you get a notification each time I upload. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video.